sign up sheet is in the back or see Veronica Costa. Mark your calendars. Sunday, April 16th, we will be kicking off our women's, men's, and kids' ministries from 5 to 6.30 p.m. We are excited to announce our women's ministry, Hearts on Fire with Ana Chavez. Men's ministry, Keep the Men with Robert Acosta Sr. And our kids' ministry, Cadet Edition with Catalina Campos. Make sure to mark your calendars for Sunday, April 16th, 5 to 6.30 p.m. We are beginning our young women's group, Girl Time, ages 16 to 35, for a time to hang out, fellowship, and study the women in the Bible. First meeting will be at Peter Piper Pizza, Saturday, April 29th at 11 a.m. See Emily DiCorcheo for more details. We're excited to announce our next prophetic conference, Thursday, September 7th through Saturday, September 9th. Be sure to mark your calendars. More information to come. Can you sing? Can you play an instrument? Would you like to try out for our worship team? See Nimzi Aposta for more information. Do you have a desire to learn and worship God with a tambourine? Would you like to join our Unity Tambourine Group? Speak with Gloria Atamirano at this service. We have three electronic ways to give. Online at www.thecitadel.church or text the dollar amount to 84321 or through the Church Center app. You can also give in person by check or cash. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and one of our ushers will be happy to hand you one. Stay tuned for our offering message. God bless. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You like that announcement? <laughs> Our first time we try it on, um, to do it on uh, the screen, it said, uh, to save Veronica's voice. <laughs> hey, good to see you. Uh, let me know Rebecca. Good to see you, Rebecca. Praise God. And thank you, Vanessa, for putting that all together. And <laughs> working because we did we tried last week we did not able to pull it together but uh robert jr finally figured out how to get it from the computer to the screen and the, and the voice also so praise god hallelujah thank you jesus so good to see you all again here to see you mauricio uh, and did you you guys heard the, the testimony that john shared earlier at the staff meeting about him and um, uh, Francisco went to the movie theater <laughs> on Tuesday. Do you want to come and share real yeah, quick with us? Come on, yeah. come on. Yeah. real quickly. What the Lord has done, that was boldness. Praise God. Real quick, because I don't think not everybody heard it. Yeah. Prophet John did us the honor of Something as to see the movie come out in Jesus' name. And at the end of the movie, they had like a half an hour uh, prayer for deliverance. And people would repeat that prayer and they would manifest in the movie theater. But this last few showings, they took it out. So after the movie, we just kind of added the people outside. And I asked Prophet John if he could start praying for people. And he said, Sure, I will. And as we had probably like 30 people yeah. approximately around there. Yes. And he probably prayed for just about every one of them. And <laughs> it was amazing because there was no worship before, but he just went right in for it and started giving them words of knowledge. And yes. people, why did he just broke down? She just started crying right away as soon as Prophet John said, What's just going on? And she just broke down and started crying. Um, another lady got filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, another yeah. lady got um, fell under the anointing. And just as, as different people were coming in, he was just spot on to what was currently happening in their life, and they were very blessed. It was a really amazing time. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Give Jesus another hand clap. That was a powerful time that they had at the movie theater outside. So that is wonderful. Linda. 
And uh, she one that she mentioned about wanting to do an outreach or going outside to evangelize. That would be wonderful if you guys can connect to something like that, you know, and announce it. Because I'm sure some people want to join you guys and go out and invite people. Because that's what we really need. Amen. Denise, good to see you. Love you. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay. I have a word that I wanted to share with you tonight about the offering because uh, God is very serious about when it comes to giving our tithe and offering. The reason why he is because he wanted to bless us. Amen? He really wanted to bless us. He does not want us to struggle. And um, okay, I think I shared last week or the last time I spoke. Uh, I mentioned about the scripture where your treasure is there is your heart also. But God wanted us to make sure that our treasure is with him. Okay. First Samuel chapter 1. I'm going to read verse 4 to uh, verse 4 and 5. It says, And when the time came for Elkanah, Elkanah, oh, when the time, whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portion to Benina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he would give a double portion. Listen to this. He would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah. Although the Lord had closed her womb. Now, if you guys don't know the story, Elkanah had two wives. One wife is Benina. The other wife is Hannah. Benina had children. She bore children. But Hannah had no children. And we just heard that the, the Lord closed her womb. And their husband named Elkanah. See, so here's one man, Elkanah, have two wives. One is Penina, have children. The other one is Hannah. But when it comes to offering time, um, Elkanah only gave a portion to Penina and her children. But he gave a double portion to uh, Hannah. So why did he give her the proportion? Because he loved her. And I thought about this. I thought you would give more to the one that had been bearing children, right? But he gave more to the one he loved. And I was like, wow. And that spoke to me so much that when we love God, so much because God knows the end story of Hannah and the person that God loves so much he will give a double portion he will give a double portion we may think we don't have much we may think that we are barren okay we may think that we are barren tonight not only in the church, but in us individually. But I tell you what, if you love God, and if you honor God, God will give you a double portion. That is his desire. Sometimes we feel broken, hurt, because of life. Things that happen to us in life. But I tell you what, God knows what we went through in life. God knows, but when he sees your heart, honoring him, loving him, God can help but to give you a double portion. He can help but to reward you because he knows that when he can give you a double portion, you will turn around and give it back to him. Come on! Come on! That's what I want. I pray, God, 
you saw what I'm going through. You saw my brokenness. You saw that I don't have it together. But I'm going to do everything to love you. I'm going to do everything to honor you. What you gave me, I'm going to give it back to you. Let me tell you what. God wants to do the same thing for you and I. He knows your struggle. He knows that you don't have it together. He knows all the things that you went through, all the struggle. He knows that you're going to question your mistake. He knows that you look back so many times, but he knows your heart that you love him. He knows that if he's going to give it to you, the very cry of your heart. What was your cry? God, look at my adversary. I mean, the other wife, you know, the way she treated her because she doesn't have a child. And she cries, she cried out to God, God, if you ever bless me, I will give it back to you. Listen, that is God's desire for you and I. When he blessed you and I, our desire is to give it back to him. I'm not saying that, that, that oh God, I can't, what about what I, I can't pay my bill, I can't do this. No, yes, we know we already said we pay our tithe and offering, but more than that, our obedience to him. And when we do that, God can help. But to give you a double portion. You only ask for one. But look what God gave to Anna. He gave her a son, and that and that was prophet Samuel. And that prophet. It's not only blessing her family, not only blessing Hannah and um and uh and Elkanah, now a whole nation. God bless. Amen? And that's what God wanted to give to us. That's what God wanted to do through your life and my life. He wanted to give us a double portion because he knows that we are going to be back to him, not only to change us, but to change a city, change a family, change a city, change a nation, and God's desire for you and I. Amen? So I wanted to see if you can lift up your hand, they already announced it, if you're going to give it online, a text, or use the app, or get an a envelope, and I'm just lift up your hand, I'm going to pray for you. Holy Spirit, I want to say thank you for your word that we have, you have given me, reminded me today to share this story, oh God, because that is your desire, oh God, that you love us, whom you love, you'll give a double portion. Father, we've made many times, we felt uh, like that we are barren, oh God. But do you promise, but do you love us so much? Because you know what, you, when you're going to give it to us, we're going to give it back to you. Father, I pray that you help us, oh God, to be like Hannah, oh God. Even though many times we felt barren, but we will continue to cry out to you, oh God. Trust in you, obey you, oh God. Because when we do that, you will give us a double portion. And I thank you, Jesus. Help us, oh God, to obey you and trust you, oh God, when it comes to give offering. And that's what Elkanah did to his wife. When it comes to offering, he gave her a double portion. And I thank you, Jesus. You are giving a double portion to everyone here tonight, even those who watch in online. Help all of us, oh God, to obey your word, oh God. And that's why you love him. And that's why you love us, oh God. And I, we receive the double portion tonight as we have heard your word. And I thank you, Jesus. Bless each one here tonight that gave. This is what they work for, oh God. They gave their 10%, gave an offering, oh God. Believing and trusting in you, oh God, that you will continue to protect them, oh God, protect their job, protect their health, protect them, oh God, when they are on the road driving, everywhere they go, 
you will continue to protect them. And I pray, oh God, that you prosper every seed that they have sown in, every even those that have given to the building fund. I pray, oh God, that you bless them all also again. And I thank you, Jesus, for hearing our prayers and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Also, I wanted to remind you guys, I forgot to share that the staff meeting, our building fund. This building fund is over and above the time. If you want to give to that also, please do so, because we are going to buy a building. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Give Jesus a big hand, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Hey, John, he's getting his, um, oh, <laughs> his iPad. Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Wasn't their worship amazing tonight? Can we give Nancy, Nancy and Bella a hand? My goodness. My goodness. They could have kept singing. Yes. Well, as you know, um, uh, Francisco set me up <laughs> the other night, and I am so thankful, uh, simply because of what the Lord did. And so this morning when I woke up, I, I began to ask the Holy Spirit, God, what do you want me to talk about tonight? What do you want me to discuss? What do you want me to preach about tonight? What's your word? What do you want to say tonight? Good to see you, Rebecca. Good to see you, Denise. Good to see all of you, Mauricio. And I really felt this, that how many want to discern God's will? How many want to discern God's will for your life? I think, I think that sometimes what happens in discerning God's will, it, it sometimes what happens is sometimes what trips us up sometimes is there are so many voices that sound like God's will that look like God's will, and sometimes how do I know if it's God's will? And I think it's imperative that we know the will of God. You know, uh, it started with a conversation somebody asked me a few days ago. I, I, I can't remember where I was, and uh, it was, I think it was the last church that we were at. Uh, uh, they asked me a question, one of the leaders asked me this question. And have you have you ever questioned what what the what the Lord told you to do? Do you or do you get a lot of prophetic words from people? And I said, well, you know, I, I get a lot of prophetic words from people uh, as I'm as I'm traveling, but a lot of times uh, uh, it's not that I don't value the prophetic word. It's not that I don't honor the prophetic word. It, it's just that if it doesn't line up. If it doesn't line up with, I believe God calling you to do it this moment, I'll just put it on the shelf and I won't pay that much attention to it. Now, I will tell you this because I do love prophecy. I want, we're going to have a prophetic conference. It's going to be amazing. I, I can't wait till God fills this church with 100 people. Come on. I believe that God's going to do that. And we're working hard to do that. But discerning God's will sometimes requires us to have this one thing. Is called resolve. Everybody say resolve. resolve. I want you to turn to Acts chapter 20. We're going to begin in verse 22. And I'm going to read something that's very, very familiar to me. And may, it may be familiar to you as well. It may not be. But Paul is on his way to Jerusalem. And notice what he says here. I'm reading from the New King James Version. And see. Now I go bound in the spirit of in the spirit to Jerusalem. Now everybody say, now I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem. Now what in the world does he mean bound? Because I don't want to be bound. I don't want to be bound by anything. I want to be free. But in other words, what this means, it actually actually means to be bound, is there's an irresistible urge to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit in the midst of uncertainty. Because sometimes what we do is we don't like uncertainty. We want to know what's going to happen on the other side. I want to know what's on the other side of this door. I want to know what's going to happen tomorrow, next year, and where I'm going. But what it means to be bound by the Spirit of the Lord is that I don't know exactly.
exactly what's going to happen, but there's a sense of urgency. There's an irresistible urge that I've got to go to Jerusalem. Now, what that makes that significant is that everywhere that Paul went, everybody warned him that you shouldn't go to Jerusalem. Come on. Even, even to the point of someone who was even in the office of a prophet by the name of Agabus told him that if you go to Jerusalem in the next chapter, you're going to be bound in beaten. Come on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you something right now. In, in our day and age, most people, if they received that prophetic word, that they were going to be bound and beaten if they go to a certain locale or go in this direction, they would avoid it at all costs. Because the American church wants to avoid any type of problem because most of us will go in the in the direction of health we'll go in the direction of wealth and we'll go in the direction of happiness yes. come on are you hearing me that's what we're, that's the direction that our human spirit will go health wealth and happiness but if I'm bound by the spirit Meliana if I'm bound by the spirit of God I go where the spirit of God tells me come on are you hearing me are you hearing me he said I now I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there. You know, I have to tell you, when the Lord spoke to us to come to Tucson, I didn't know what was going to happen. But I felt bound. I felt the, the, a sense of urgency. I felt the spirit says, and, and, and a lot of times, a lot of people told us, you're crazy. <laughs> you're, you're crazy. You, what are you doing, John? You, you've you already got your, your, your ministry. God's going to bless your ministry. And why are you taking on another? You're allowed to travel all over. Why are you taking a, a now another responsibility? And I will tell you this right now. It's because I felt bound. I felt an irresistible yes. urge yes. that God wanted to do something in this city. Uh -huh. That God wanted to do something with his people. Uh -huh. And it would ever gather, 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 guess what? We were going to build a prophetic house. Yes. We were going to build a spirit filled house. Yes. We were going to build a relational house, a house where God would be glorified. Yes. That the word of the Lord would come out yes. and lives would be changed and transformed. Yes. And I believe that the Lord really encouraged me for Francisco at the theater. Come on. Because I thank you. I, I have to thank you with all my heart because a, a, a thousands of people are going to be blessed just because you coerced me and go into the theater. Come on. I felt it because you know what? I was bound by the Spirit. He was bound to bring me. Come on. I didn't know what was happening. I just had a great movie about deliverance. I, I encourage you to go see it. It's called Come Out in Jesus' Name. Yeah. It's a great movie. But at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. I thought I was going to go to the movie, have some popcorn, and leave and just go home. Praise God. But guess what? I got a little bit of popcorn and a lot of prayer. Come on, you're hearing me. Because I was bound by the Spirit. Come on. Not knowing what's going to happen to me. Right. And I think sometimes it's very difficult for people these days to live in an atmosphere where they don't know what's going to happen. Right. They get worried. Mm -hmm. They get stressed. Mm -hmm. they, they have anxiety. Yeah. That honestly, I think the way we have to live our Christianity is we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Right. That's why Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. Right. Come on. Yes. Worry about just take care of what you gotta do today. Yes. I'll take care of you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. right. First of all, I'm in the palm of God's hands. Yes. Paul was in the palm of God's yes. hands. Yes. Because here's the thing. To be bound by the Spirit, there's an irresistible urge to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit in spite of uncertainty. But not only uncertainty, but security. Everybody say security. security. Because I will tell you this. Most of us in this room like security. Right. And what I mean by security is that we like to be safe. Right. I have security cameras on my house. <laughs> and now Anna looks at them all the time. Come on. Because we're out. You know, I mean, you know, you look at them. We have that security. 
We have security in the church. Come on. Because we want to protect the people. Why? Because we want a sense of security to know that we're safe. Right. But I'm going to ask you, can we be so confident in the spirit that we put the spirit even above security? Oh, come on. Yes. That our own security takes a lesser level, lesser role, but then his will. Come on. Because now what Paul's going to do, because of every prophetic word, that you're going to be beaten, you're going to be harmed, you don't go, and it's not coming from false prophets. Right. It's coming from the body of Christ that love him. Right. And don't want to see him injured, and don't want to see him hurt, but he feels bound. He feels, I've got to do this. I don't know why i got to do this, but ladies and gentlemen, had he not gone, we probably wouldn't have most of the New Testament. Right. You know what I'm saying? See, because what looks like something that's bad, God has a way of turning around for good. What looks like uncertainty and a lack of security actually becomes the exact place where God uses you the most. And I have found this out. I'm telling you, God's going to use some of you in ways you never thought he would use you. Because I'm not going to be bound by fear and uncertainty, Meliana. That's not what I'm going to be bound. I'm going to be bound by the Spirit of God. Because I'm going to reverse my bondage. I'm not going to be bound to worry. I'm going to be bound to, to trusting in the Holy Spirit. Which meant that Paul trusted God despite what he was going to face. Right, right. I think a person who is bound by uncertainty demonstrates a lack of faith. Yeah, let me just tell you. Melian and I, for 20 seven years have been living in uncertainty because of ministry yeah. for instance i'll just give you a basic fact we go to a church and we don't know what we're going to get paid yeah that's right yeah when you work for somebody you already know what you're, how you're going to be compensated at the end of the week or the other week or however you get paid or once a month or whatever you get paid. But, but, when, but when we go, we don't know what we're going to get. Right. And so that can create an uncertainty. And it, it, it causes us, it, it, there's no security in that. There's no security in that. And that's why people don't last. Because they trust the security more than they trust the Spirit of God. But I, but I read my Bible. I said, I've never seen a righteous forsaken for yeah. their children begging for bread. Right. The Bible says, give and it shall be given. Crushed down and shaken together and running over. Men will pour into yeah. your bosom. I have never seen somebody going after God and, and seeing not God provide them. I will open the windows of heaven and pour out blessing that you can. I ask the God that I serve. Yes. Can I tell you something right now? I've seen so many financial miracles in my life that I would have never, ever seen working at the Hawaii Conference Union. I had security. I had retirement. I had all benefits and medical. But once I got into the ministry, all that went out the window. And I can tell you, people told me I was crazy. You got two children. How are you going to provide for them? How are you going to make it on the road? Can I tell you right now, I was bound to do what the Spirit of God told me to do. And God wants to raise up people in this house that are bound by the Spirit. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know I'm in God's hand. Yes, Lord. Which means by the Spirit. By the Spirit. Yes. Francisco was bound by the Spirit to bring the prophet to the movie theater. I'm surprised we didn't get kicked out. Come on. Good. Out in the front, people falling out out in the movie yes, theater. Outside. Crying and acting all yeah. silly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what, a minute, but, but what does it mean to be bound? Firmly resolved. Yes, Jesus. Everybody say, firmly resolved. Firmly resolved. Like, you're not going to tell me not to go. Right. You can prophesy all you want. Yeah. You're not, I'm not leaving Tucson. <laughs> I'm not getting off the road. Right. 
Amen. You can tell me all you want. You can tell me this is what God is saying. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm firmly resolved. Yes. Settled. I'm yes. settled. It's already settled in my mind. Yeah. You know why people can't discern right. God's will? Because they're not settled not inside settled. their soul. Mm -hmm. They're not settled in their heart. Mm -hmm. They're not settled with yeah. the connection with the Spirit wants. And they're in agreement with what the Spirit wants. And when they get in line with the Spirit, they settle it that you're not moving me. Right. You're not moving me. I'm not leaving. Mm -hmm. I'm not leaving this place. I'm not leaving the church. I'm not right. walking out of the church. I'm not, right. I'm not leaving my pastor. My right. pastor, my rock, he's my pastor. Right. I'm not leaving that. I'm not right. leaving where God called me to because I've resolved right. in my mind this is what God wants me. That's it. That's it. And when we make that kind of commitment, yeah. guess what happens? That's it. The, what, so people can say all oh, good. They can opportunity. Let me just tell you. Yeah. What causes sometimes people not to discern God's will is when a better opportunity comes their way yeah. than the one they're in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I have to tell you a story. This pastor came to me and he he called me on the phone and he said, John, I want to resign. And I'd like to be the pastor of the church. He has 500 people. They got the bells and whistles. They don't have just a handful of people like we do. Right. And there's a salary of $125,000 a year and benefits and, and health insurance. And, 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 and then I said, absolutely not. So about a month goes by and we're in the city now because we're going to preach for him. He called him and said, I want to take you out to lunch. So he takes me out to lunch and well, I remember exactly where we were at Panera Bread. And he's sitting across the, across the table and he says, John, I've talked to my board already. They're in 100% agreement for you to pass your church. <laughs> On top of that, I added an extra benefit. They'll hire your daughter and your son so you can have both of your children and grandchildren here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what an opportunity. Yeah. I'm in a nice city yeah. with a 500 member church. Yeah. Now they'll, they'll hire my kids, and I can have my kids on my staff. And in and, and, and the natural, and, 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 and was that? Four years ago. That was four years ago, 2018. Five years ago, 2018. And, and, and it all looks good. And then all of a sudden I realized this is not the vision that God had given me. Come on. This is not what God spoke to me back in 1995 when he told me, I'm going to take you all over the United States and you're going to prophesy the word of the Lord. This was not when God spoke to me in 2021 to come to Tucson. It was not the same voice. Come on. Oh, come on. Come that on. wasn't the voice of the Lord. That was the voice of a hurting pastor. Yeah. It was giving me an opportunity. But sometimes what can happen is sometimes the devil can't trip us up. But opportunity sometimes can trip us up because it looks like God. It looks like a great advancement. It looks like a promotion when it's not God. When God really says, you know what, because let me just tell you, it, it brought every health, wealth, and happiness. Come on. And you know what I did? I remember telling him, I looked him in the eye and said, I'm going to call my wife. I called Miliana. She was in the hotel. I called her and I said to her, we need to take the pastor to Hawaii to the prophetic conference because he's not thinking straight. He's discouraged. And so Meliana got on the got on her dead her magic and next thing you know they had two plane tickets to go to the prophetic conference in 2018 with us. And guess what? We've never had the conversation <laughs> since then. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. They did not leave. Yeah. Because you know what? You know what if I went there? I might destroy that tree. Come on. Because that's not my calling. That was God was not calling me there. The pastor was calling me there. Yes. Yes. The pastor was calling me there. God was not calling me that And he's a very, very, very forceful person. Very, very he's a great leader. 
He's a great leader. But listen to this. And so in Acts 20, 23, he says, except that the Holy Spirit testified, now that listen to Except that the Holy Spirit testified in every city that chains and tribulations await me. Whoa. <laughs> no, thank you. Jeez. Come on. I, I'm not, uh, chains and tribulations await you, Paul, and you're going to go. Well, let me just tell you. Are we more afraid of the chains and tribulations than obeying the Holy Spirit? We should be more afraid of obeying God than we are the change wow. and the tribulations. Because if this is what God has called me to be, because if this is God who has called me, I have to go with her. I have change and tribulations. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Any church, any organization, any ministry is going to go through tribulations. Every one of us are going to go through tribulation, yeah. but I am not going to allow the tribulation yeah. to determine what I do. In fact, I'm going to walk right through the tribulation because you will walk through the fire and not be burned. Yes. Come on. Yes. And I know the story. They did arrest him, yeah. but guess what? The Romans came and saved him and rescued him right. and kept his life. Come on, are you hearing me? Right. But this is what happened. Because that jail and suffered uh, jail and suffering over him, but that the urge of the Holy Spirit was stronger than oh, the Come on. Come on. And yeah. something has to when you're filled with the Spirit of God, it, you don't even, it doesn't even come into your mind like, right. oh man, I'm going to go to jail. That's why you see people go through persecution. They're yeah. the most happiest people in the world. Right. And man, the Spirit has done a work. Jesus. Of yeah. Oh God, do that work. Yeah. Do what you did. Yes, Lord. Listen to this. I couldn't wait to get to this one because it's one of my favorite verses. And in fact, I talked to Meliana a lot about this verse. I just this phrase. But listen to Meliana. Acts 20, 24. But none of these things move me. Yes. That's that's it. None of these things move me. No church. How many of you heard bad news? The doctor told me I was going to die. <laughs> the dentist. <laughs> the, the, the high blood pressure. That I had high blood pressure. <laughs> I told, told, uh, I told Miguel, I got a blood pressure thing, and now I got blood pressure pills. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to go to the doctor. I'll just come to the Citadel. <laughs> Drinking quadruple shots of Starbucks two weeks ago. I stopped doing that. Praise Jesus. But but I but it, but you can't tell. Come on, girl, because it didn't change my personality. Are you hearing me? Because none of these things move me. Because we get so easily moved by negativity. Why can't we be moved by the Spirit? It's interesting that we'll move. We'll move when there's negative, but we won't move in the earth and the tongue of the Holy Spirit. Maybe the people that are so sensitive to the Holy Spirit that none of these things move. 
Thank you, Jesus. That's what I'm going to ask. Well, how's Arizona with the new governor? I said, it don't move me. <laughs> I don't care who's the governor. It's not going to move me. Are you hearing me? It doesn't matter. Right. Well, the Mexican was strong. It's just not going to matter. It's going to be a thing I'm not caught up in that mess. I, I'm going to do what God has called me to do. Yes. Let them do what they want to do. I'm not a politician. I'm a prophet. And I will tell you right now, none of these things move me. Well, what about the people coming in from the border? They don't move me. There's a lot of land in the United States. Come on. <laughs> but you hear what I'm saying? None of these things move me. Nor do I count my life dear to myself Jesus. so that I might finish my race with joy. Oh, Listen to this. On. And the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Was told. Yeah. No, it tells me Paul's values. Yes. It tells me at the end of the day, yeah. in the heat of battle, with the pressure, yeah. the anxiety, Every, everything yeah. that was happening in the stress, right. Paul showed us what he done. Right, right, right. The ministry right. I received from Jesus. That's it. The ministry that I received from Jesus is more important than my own life. Mm -hmm. right. And I'm willing to, to do the ministry that Jesus called me to. I'm willing, even willing to jeopardize my own life. Right. That's what he does. Right. You know what? I pray that every one of us yes, at the city of the church in Tucson, Arizona, yes. that's what we get down to. Yes, what Lord. we have received from Jesus. Yes, Lord. And we, oh gosh. Come on. Listen to this. To testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Yes, Lord. So everything was about me. that, you know what's going to happen? Why, Lord? Because I'm going to get to testify. Mm -hmm. To people about Jesus, that I, I, if I don't go, I won't be testified. Right, right, right. I don't want to go, mm -hmm. but I'm going because no, the spirits me. Right. My, my flesh don't want to go. Right. My flesh didn't want to go to the movies either. What? Why? I went to the movie not to watch the movie. I went to the movie to testify to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what I don't understand. I want that thing. I've been born. That doesn't matter who we are. Whether we're working at a job or whether behind the pulpit, every one of us are called to testify of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because, in other words, finishing the race, finishing my mission is more important than my own life. Right? Okay, let me just tell you. You know what makes life worthless? There's, there's thousands of people who believe that their life is worthless right here in the city. Right? Right? You know why? Because they're not doing the work God has assigned them. If I die, no, 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 guess what? At least I did the work God assigned me. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Come on. Glory to God. Are you heard me? Mm -hmm. it, 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 and, but I'm not going to die right now. I want to live. I'm going to live until I'm 120. And my name is going to be 123. <laughs> now you know how old she is, and I'm 60. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're gonna go up like Moses. Come on. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get him my medicine here in the Citadel. I'm gonna get prayer in the Citadel. I'm gonna get everything I need to live to 120. But by, by that time, by that time, Ava will have her grandchildren too, you know, and so she'll be she'll be up here praying Jesus. She'll run the service for me. Come on and pray for me. Come on. Listen to this. It says it says, I love this. In other words, Paul wasn't moved by uncertainty or tribulation. Because yeah. I gotta ask myself, what moves me? Yeah. What moved Paul was the gospel. Yes, Jesus. Oh, yes, Jesus. Lord. I think I told Francisco this. I told him my lunch on Tuesday, I said, Francisco, everything that Mary and I think about and do is for one purpose. Mm -hmm. The preaching of the gospel. Yes, Jesus. 
Yes, Lord. I'll spend, I'll spend all my money yes, to preach Lord. the gospel. Yes, Jesus. Because I can't put a price on it. I put the gospel down to me. That's it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be standing up here tonight. Mm -hmm. I've got a schedule a year out. One year, One year in advance. Yeah. It's been going on for years now. Why? There's one person. I just want to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Because when I do that, and I don't care where I'll preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. I'll preach the gospel in a bar. I'll preach the gospel behind the pulpit. I'll preach the gospel outside a movie theater. I'll preach the gospel in prison. I'll preach the gospel wherever. Because yes. that's what moves me. Come yes. on. And anytime I get to preach the gospel, open the door. I'll preach the gospel in Spanish, I'll yes. preach it in Korean, wow. I'll preach it in Chinese, I'll preach the gospel wherever I get the opportunity yes. to preach the gospel. Yes. Is there anybody that wants to preach the gospel? Come on. Is there anybody that wants to preach the gospel? Yes. I place more value. Mm -hmm. I'm going to place more value. Mm -hmm. Because any, any, in all of this, because I want you to turn with me because I'm going to start wrapping this up. <coughs> Here he is. He's not moved. Why? Because over the years, I've seen, I've seen even prophetic people. I've seen, it doesn't matter, mature, mature leaders or someone, someone that's been born again yesterday. So easily moved by God. Yeah. Like, okay, God just spoke to you. Mm -hmm. And then the next year, you change your mind. I said, is God schizophrenic? I don't think so. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. And so, when people ask me, are you ever going to get off the road? Until God tells me. He hasn't told me yet. And then when he tells me, I will. But I don't think he's going to tell me. Because I, because I remember what he said when he spoke to me. In 1995, because Paul understood a prophetic word that when Ananias told him, yeah. when Ananias, when he come, he had been blinded in Acts 9, he blinded and he sees Jesus and he says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And you know what he said? Who are you? Yeah. Everybody say, who are you? Who are you? What, that, that, that shakes me every time I, I, even every time I quote it or read it. Because wait a minute, you're talking about a guy who spent his whole life I was just listening to to uh, somebody on, on a podcast I was at running today that, that Jewish boys from the time they're 6 to 10 years old have to memorize Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy, Numbers and Deuteronomy before the age of 10. And then after the age of 10, it, it, then, then they go, then they become apprentice, they become whatever their father's doing, a fisherman or a carpenter. But then what they do, after the age of 10, if, they're, if, if one of the boys have this revelatory gift where they're getting revelation, then, they, then what they do, they spend the next few years memorizing from Genesis all the way to Malachi. Whoa. Memorizing it. Yeah. Quoted it verbatim. Wow. Don't tell me our kids come. Thank God for Catalina yeah. and kids memorizing the scriptures because every time they do a play, every day walk up and speak the verbatim. I praise God for that. And, and then, and then, and then out of that, some of them, some of them, man, they, 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 they want to then follow a rabbi. And they follow a rabbi. And see, that's why it's so amazing because sometimes we don't understand the Bible because we sometimes we don't read it through that set of lenses that I, I was... I was reading something today, and then when 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 Pe when Jesus asked Peter to step out of the boat and walk on water, because you know what Peter, because Peter had remember, memorized the f first five books of the Bible. Then at ten years old, he studied to become a fisherman. When Jesus said, "Come," mm -hmm. and Peter turns, he says, "It is you, bid me to come." Come and walk. You know what he was saying? No. You didn't go to the next level. Mm -hmm. All you did was memorize the first book. Mm -hmm. But Peter, I see your potential. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Yeah. 
I see your potential. I see who you could become. Yeah. That you're going to do more than walking on water. Yeah. Come, he said, come. Yeah. He said, follow me. Yeah. Follow me. Yeah. Follow me. Sometimes God will ask us to follow. You know why he's calling us to follow us? Because guess what? We only see our limitations. Yeah. Yeah. We only see our weaknesses. We only see what we have done in our life or our sin nature or our weaknesses. But when he says, come follow me, he said, I see your potential. And because I see your potential when nobody else sees it. Because nobody in the boat saw the potential. The invitation was to everybody. But people said, yes, I can be what you said I can be God. I can be, I can be a water walker. I can be a man of faith. I can be a person that can do all the things for you and glorify you. Then I want to preach the gospel. Come on. And he walks out on water. A lot of people make fun for his lack of faith. But at least he walked. I said, at least he walked. I'm sure we never got upset at our kids when they got when they were little toddlers or little babies and they started walking and they fell. We probably oh no, 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 you ain't walking. We got so excited because they took two steps forward. Come on. You know, people make a big deal about his lack of faith that he sunk. At least he walked. Because how many people have literally walked on water in this room? I haven't. Come on. I haven't literally walked on water, but he's the only person I know other than Jesus that walked on water. But the interesting thing that Jesus was right there to pick him up. Aren't you thankful God picks you up? And you know what they did? They both walked to the boat. Come on. They both walked back to the boat. And because they walked back to the boat, they he was the one that walked. And they believed in him and they put their trust in him because he walked on water. Give God a shout of praise. I don't want to be moved. But in Acts 21, in Acts 21, and it's been something that, because here, 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 Paul has to do this because Paul has to be so, have to have such an inner resolve because listen to what it says. I actually, I want to read out of the New Living. Because listen to this. We went ashore, this is the New Living. We went ashore and found local believers and stayed, and stayed with them a week. Listen to this. These believers prophesied through the Holy Spirit that Paul should not go to Jerusalem. Is that crazy? That's crazy. Because here in Acts 20, he's already made his result. He now goes to these believers. He stays in their house in the week. And they prophesy, don't go to Jerusalem. You mean to tell me? Now, I love the fact that Miliana, they're not false prophets. They were prophets. They were, yeah. they were believers yeah. that had the gift of prophecy. Mm -hmm. They told them, don't go by the spirit. Oh, yeah. Don't go to Jerusalem. Oh, Jesus. What would you do in that situation? Right. How would you react if, if like, here's this family. Yeah. Here's this spiritual family that we have. That one of one of us that we got around you, mm -hmm. all of us, and got around, you, including me, and said, "Don't go to Jerusalem." More than likely, mm -hmm. most of us would say, "Well, yeah, yeah." But Paul understands something. Mm -hmm. No, these believers aren't false, Why? because their intention was not to deceive. Them. The right. definition of a false prophet is someone who intends to deceive. Right. They wanted to protect Paul, not to see Paul. Mm -hmm. But in their desire to protect him, mm -hmm. guess what they did? They misinterpreted mm -hmm. and misapplied what Paul should do. Right. Because sometimes what can happen is we can get a prophetic word for somebody, but we get the wrong application. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. That's why it's important to get around the prophetic and have mature prophetic words come out. Because sometimes what can happen. But see, Paul never said, never called them out. You're a false prophet. Never told them you missed it. He allowed them to speak into his life. Because, because and the thing was too, because I'm telling you this, this is the truth in the prophetic. There is sometimes a mixture of our own spirit and the Holy Spirit. Because whether or not if I give a prophetic word to somebody, it's still John giving it. Yeah. It's coming through my voice. It's coming through me. Part of me is in the, in the word or 
you heard what I'm saying. And see, we have to understand that in, in this context, I honestly believe with all my heart, they love Paul so much. They, they, they so want Paul not to be hurt, not to be, not to go through something that they, they spoke, they spoke part of the word, you're going to go to Jerusalem, you're going to get, you're going to get hurt. We understand that part, but don't go. Now the don't go part was coming from their own spirit. It was coming from their own spirit. And so Paul has to, Paul has to differentiate that. I love you, but I got to go to Jerusalem. But then the big one, the big one, is that then several days later, in verse 10, a man named Agabus. Now I'm going to go to, I'm going to read out of, out of the NIV right now. Verse 11. Coming up, uh, uh, verse 10, rather. Um, um, and, and after we had a number, there a number of days, excuse me, a prophet named Agabus came down to Judah. Coming over to us, he took Paul's belt, tied his own hands and feet with it, and said, the Holy Spirit says, in this way, the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem will bind the owner of his belt, <coughs> will hand them over to the Gentiles. When they heard this, now he said this in front of the whole church. When they heard this, the people pleaded with Paul not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, verse 13, Why are you weeping and breaking my heart? Am I not ready only to be bound but also die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Just listen to what that says. Basically what it says, Miliana, is this. You're grieving. It's hurting me more than what's coming. Dear God, help us. Help us, oh God. Because I've already resolved that because sometimes I'm not going to, obviously this prophetic word is true. Obviously that's exactly what's going to be happening yeah. as the prophet said. Yeah. But here's the thing. I'm not a person that's going to avoid suffering at the expense of, of obeying the Holy Spirit. I have to obey the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And if you're watching online, we've got to be people yeah. who obey the Holy Spirit yeah. at all costs. No matter what's on the other side of the door, can I hear an amen right now? I don't know what's going to happen next year. I don't know what's going to happen in six months from now. But I do know this. I'm not going to be moved. This is where God has called me. This is where God wants me. This is exactly what God wants me to do. And I shall not be moved. Everybody say, I shall not be moved. I want that to be an echo in our spirit. We're not going to be moved. Whether I get offended, I'm not going to be moved. Whether somebody gets me, makes me angry, I'm not going to be moved. Whether I have something happen to me, I'm not going to be moved. When I go through challenges, I'm not going to be moved. When I lose my house, I'm not going to be moved. Or get another house, I'm not going to be moved. Whether I'm prosperous or not prosperous, I'm not going to be moved. Where I'm healthy or not healthy, I'm not going to be moved. Where I'm happy or not happy, I'm not going to be moved. Can I give God a shout of praise right now? I'm not going to be moved. Because I'm not going to be moved. Guess what? God will honor our commitment. Yes. He honored Paul. Mm -hmm. Paul got to fulfill yeah. every one of those things. Got to, yeah. got to go to Rome. Yeah. Yeah. He went through it. Yeah. He went through it. Yeah. But what he went through has changed yeah. generations. Yeah. Yeah. Generations. It's saved. Yes. The church has wow. been saved. Yes, Jesus. He's an apostle. He, his yes. teaching oh, is being preached even today. Because Jesus. what if he was moved yeah. by the emotions of the church? Right. Yeah. Yeah, God. Not to say that we're not going to say that we don't care about your emotions. He went, why are you weeping? At, why are you grieving? Oh, and you're, right. It's hurting me. Your emotions. Yeah. You're weeping. It's hurting me. Right. It's hurting my heart. It's breaking my heart. Right. It is breaking my heart. Yes. But even... The emotional pain that you're going through, I cannot disobey what I believe, my right, conviction, right. and why I need to do this. Yes, Jesus. Which tells me mm -hmm. his convictions mm -hmm. were more powerful than his emotions. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes, Lord. When our convictions are more powerful yeah. than our emotions, right. we are relying ourselves for God to promote right. us. Right. Mm -hmm. Lift your hands toward heaven. Right thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father, we thank you for your word. Bless you, Lord. It's a lamp unto our feet. Yeah. It is a light unto our path. Father, you, you are raising up a group of yes, people that know how to discern your will. Yes, because in this house, we love the prophetic. We love to receive prophetic words and we love to give prophetic words. But at the end of the day, we shall not be moved. We may have an inner, inner resolve, or not an inner resolve. That this is what God has called me to do. It's not the, it's not pride. It's not a lack of humility. It's not. Uh, we know what the Spirit is urging us to do, and we're going to walk in that place. We're going to walk with that sense of an irresistible urgency to fulfill the will of God, no matter what it costs us. It, it may, because Lord Jesus, we live in a day and age where people want the benefits of the kingdom without taking up the cross and without self-denial. And Father, right, that is not the gospel because you even said in, your, in the gospel that if we want to be a disciple, we have to take, deny ourselves, take up our cross, and we got to follow him. And Lord Jesus, nobody wants to deny their flesh today. They want to feed their flesh. They want to go to a church that feeds the flesh. They want to go to a house that feeds the flesh. Flesh, flesh, flesh. And that's why we're in the condition in America right now. Because we haven't taken up the cross and denied ourselves. But Father, you are raising up a different company of men and women that will deny themselves. Because they want your will more than they want their own will. They want to fulfill the will of the Lord and run the race with joy and preach this wonderful gospel in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Give God a shout of praise right now. Hallelujah. 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 I want everybody to stand. I want everybody to stand. I want everybody to stand. Thank you, God. I want you to lift your hands to Jesus yes, right where you're standing, yes, all Lord. over the room. Hallelujah. There's an anointing in this room. Hallelujah. There's an anointing in this room. Hallelujah. There's an anointing in this room yes, right Lord. now. Yes. Father, we thank you for this word. Let this word be imprinted in our heart. Let it be imprinted in our soul. Let it be a part of our personality. Yes, Lord. Let us go back to it and run back to it and yes, run back to Acts 20. Yes. 22, 23, 24. Let us run back to it every time. Let us run back to it. Let us run back to it. Father, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't even know what's going to happen with the city. Yeah. But Lord, we know. We know one thing. You are good. And your mercy endures forever. Father, we, we don't know, but we know your character, God. We know your grace. We know your will. We know your promises, God. We know your promises. Lord, whatever you have for us, whatever you have for us in this life, whatever you have for us, whatever, whatever path you want us to take, Father, may we not choose the path of least resistance. Because you even said in the Sermon of the Mount that draw is the way that leads to destruction, the narrow is the way that leads to life. Paul took the narrow way. Paul took the narrow way. God, we want to take the narrow way. We want to take the narrow way. Lord, we like things to be easy, but it's not. Because we live in a fallen world, broken, weak people, God. And right now, in the name of Jesus, raise up a company of men and women that will not be loved. That will not be loved. If you're in this room tonight and you say, Preach, I shall not be loved. Give me a wave offering right now. I'm not going to be moved. I'm not going to be moved by the economy. I'm not going to be moved by politics. I'm not going to be moved by bad news. God knows I'm not going to be moved because I'm committed to this gospel message. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Let's just wait on the Lord for a moment. Yes. Just wait on the Lord for a moment right yes. now. Let's just wait on the Lord right now in this room. Father, we love you. 
Father, we adore you. Father, I pray. I pray for each one, God. I pray for each one. I pray for Rebecca and Linda. I pray for Anna. I pray for Gloria. I pray for Miguel. And I pray for Vanessa. And I, I pray for Robert. And I pray for Veronica. I pray for Denise. I pray for Amicio. I pray for Robert Jr. I pray for Francisco. I pray for Nancy and Meliana. I pray right now that we would be people. That, Father, that we, we don't choose security over your spirit. That we're not afraid of uncertainty. And uncertainty becomes the fuel. Fuel in our soul. Fuel in our spirit right now. The uncertainty of what may tomorrow may bring. Which as long as we're in your will. As long as we're doing your will. We'll, we'll be right where you want us. You know the day, the hour. You know you know the time and seasons. You know that. We're, we, we're not going to concern ourselves with that. We're concerned with what you have called us to do. Let us burn for that, God. Hallelujah. Father, I decree and declare that you are going to raise up a church of 500 people. Yes, Lord. I decree and declare in this house that you're going to raise up a people of 500 people believers, God, men and women and children that are on fire for you, prophesying the word of the Lord, living out lives that are committed to each other and with covenant and conviction and Father, being filled with your spirit right now and I prophesy that we're going to have a strip mall, we're going to have a building, we're going to have a building of our own, you're going to have that prophetic center, you're going to have that school, we shall not be moved by what we see in the natural or even with somebody who loves us dearly whom we respect and honor and heed and even listen to like Paul listened to the believers and that prophet Agabus but he was not moved I pray that we would say that carry that same heart that came that same posture put your hand on your heart right now Put your hand on your heart right now. I want you to say this. Jesus. Jesus. Tonight. Tonight. I did not hear a sermon. I did not hear a sermon. I heard a command. I heard a command. God. God. Tonight I'm asking you this. Tonight I'm asking you this. I'm going to be bound by your spirit. Be bound by your spirit. I'm not bound by lust. I'm bound by anger or emotion. But bound by your spirit. That I can't resist the urge of your spirit. Lord, I don't want to be bound by uncertainty or personal security. Only bound by your spirit. And right now, God, I decree that none of these things move me. That my life, my own life, I'm willing to give to you, Lord. And right now, God, I thank you for the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. That you gave me a ministry, God. And I live for that. I live to fulfill that. To testify of the gospel of grace. Use me now, God. I may not be moved. I will be believers. Even by the prophetic. I want to be locked in. Completely here in my will. In Jesus' name. Now lift your hands and thank him all over the house. Thank him all over the house right now. Thank him all over the house. And then see if you feel like worshiping and singing. Just, just go ahead. Just go ahead. We praise you. Jesus. We worship you, God. Thank we you, love Father, you. for your word. We, we heard thank you, God. We thank you, Thank you, Jesus, that we're we'll not We thank you, God. We thank you. We thank you, we thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. 
We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father, right now. We're not moved. We're not moved. We're not, not moved by what people do or don't do. We're not moved by the reaction of people, God. We're moved by your spirit. We get so easily moved by the reaction of others. But tonight we shall not be moved. Mind and heart of God on you, Lord, in your, what you call us to do. I understand that this, yes, oh God. he whose yes. mind is set on the Lord, he will have perfect peace. That's it. That's it. He will have perfect peace. That's it. The reason Paul could, could resist the pressure yes, oh coming from the church who loved him Hallelujah. is because he had peace inside. God, I pray that that same peace would yes, dwell oh us. Yes. The same peace that Jesus talked about in Philippians chapter 4, Paul wrote about it. Yes, Jesus. The peace that transcends our understanding, yes, transcends Lord. our mind. It, it, it is unexplainable. Hallelujah. Paul knew what he was talking about because yes. he walked it out, he lived it out. Yes, Jesus. He lived it out. God, we're so spoiled in the West. Western Christianity were yeah, so spoiled. So we're enamored by bright lights and Hollywood rather than rather than holiness. God, and I pray oh God. God in the name of Jesus. Yes, oh, God. oh God, and we so we're so easily moved oh God. by the latest Christian trends, oh God. by the latest fashion, by the latest song, instead of being moved by the yes, Spirit. Yes, oh God. Let us be people moved by your Spirit. Yes. People feel with the Spirit. If you have the freedom to pray in the Spirit, pray in tongues right now, out loud. Pray in the Spirit right now in this room. Because as we're praying in the Spirit, we're uttering words that is unexplainable. Word, words that can't be interpreted. Words that the heaven understands, our heavenly language. Release that in the atmosphere. Release that in the atmosphere. Lord, I decree and declare that every this the pews are full of people. The pews are full of people, God. The pews are full of people. I decree and declare even tonight, even tonight, in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare. Your will will be done and your kingdom will come. That we're on the move, God. We're moving. We're not locked in the, it, we're not locked to a clock. We're not locked to a, a moment, Father. We are, we are locked into you. But Lord, we are not discouraged. We are not discouraged. I'm going to finish my race with yes, joy. Yes, oh God. Man, man. Hallelujah. I'm going to finish with, go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Praise you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you, Father, again for your word that we have heard tonight. I pray, oh God, that you help us, oh God. Empower us, oh God, to be like Paul. What we have heard tonight, oh God, that we will not be moved easily, oh God, by somebody, oh God well-meaning Christian, oh God, even prophesying, oh God. But when we heard from you, oh God, even though that they are concerned for our safety, they are concerned, oh God, for for what you what they want us to do, oh God. But I pray, oh God, that tonight we will obey your word, oh God. Your your word in your in the Bible, oh God. We will obey that word, oh God. That's what will empower us. That's what will strengthen us, oh God, not to be moved by any circumstances, not to be moved by good motives or great motives, oh God. But help us tonight, oh God. We trust in you, oh God. Continue to uh, uh, empower us, oh God, tonight. Use the word again that we have heard, oh God. That we will never be detoured from what you have called us, oh God. Especially to obey you. Especially to trust in you, oh God. In every area of our lives. And that's how we will have the strength to stand 
firm so we can be able, oh God, because when we stand firm obeying you, oh God, we will be able to influence more people, oh God, that you have called us to do influence with your word, Lord. And I thank you, Jesus, and I praise you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. Give God a shot of praise. Give God a shot of praise. Are you glad you came to the house of God? Are you glad you came to the house of God? I'm so, I'm so glad I came to the house of God. I'm going to preach that message tomorrow night. Yes. I'm so glad. That really struck me. I'm going to dig in more. Because I'm not going to be moved. We're not going to be moved. We're not going to be moved. No. We're not going to be moved. And, you know, because I, because when I think about it, when I think about it, because sometimes pressure can actually cause somebody to lose their convictions. Mm -hmm. The pressure. Yeah. The pressure. Yeah, the pressure from family, friends. From family, friends. friends. And that's why people who, who made a commitment, I'm yeah. not drinking, I'm going to keep come pure yeah. in my sexuality, I'm not going to do things that would undermine my relationship with God. Yeah. But the pressure. Yeah. Causes them to break their break their convictions. Yeah. But Paul shows me nothing. Nothing. Yes, Jesus. Nothing. Nothing will move me. Yes. Nothing. Yes, nothing yes Jesus. Yes, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. And because nothing is going to move me. God's going to build a great church here. Yeah. Yes. There's great churches yeah. here. And there's thank a God. Great there's a great here. church in our world. Yeah. Yeah. There's not enough great churches. Yeah. Here. There's, yeah. there's, 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 a, there's a lot of people that need yeah. to get saved. Need to get saved. Need to get saved. Yeah. I wonder if 10% of the city is saved. I don't even think so. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. 10% of the city is not saved. Boy, wouldn't be a, how would you guys like to have a tithe in this city? Oh, come on. Just give me a tithe, God. Yeah. Give me a tithe. Tired for city. That means something. A hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. Whoa, people. Oh, come on. Dr. Joe had over a million. Mm -hmm. Think the about it. Was over a million. All the churches here in Tucson, they don't even have ten percent yeah. of of Tucson Not even in the church. Mm -hmm. I put one percent would be ten thousand. There's no church in Tucson. Ten thousand. No. There are a lot of great churches. There's great churches. We can ask God, God yeah. give us 10%. Mm -hmm. Come on. Let's pray that right now. Yes, Father, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> Jesus, I know how you can you know how to do that. Yes, Jesus. You know how to do that. You know how to do that. Yes, Lord. We pray. Jesus, Jesus. Give us 10% of this year. Yes, Father. Give us 10% of this year. Yes, Jesus. She wanna say so. Yes, oh God. Yes. Lord, I, I saw all those people. Yes, going in and out of that theater. Mm -hmm. And they all turn around. That's right. Leaving the theater in the same way they can live. Mm -hmm. God we Father, they they attract a crowd. For entertainment. Yes. Father, I pray right now, Lord, that the, those yes. same people in that movie theater would yes, come to church. Yes, Jesus. Because you can now entertain Disney yes, and Disney. Jesus. You can now preach Disney. You can now perform Disney in your day. Because your signs and your workers are yes, real. Lord. They're not made up. They're not man made. They're not manufactured. Yes, They're real. God, I ask you to give us 10% of the city. Yes, Lord. I ask you to do that. Yes, Jesus. But I do know that you will to save the city of Tucson. Yes. That all who call the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Father, there's, we, we live in a world of darkness. Jesus. But if we had 100,000 people, or if we had 100,000 yes, people in our church, We'd have a little influence yes, in the city. Mm -hmm. We'd be able to transform the city, God. Yes, Turn the city upside down. Use yes, the citadel. Use the people here. 
Boy, this is the beginning. We're not even two years old. You've done so much. We are so thankful. We, we are so grateful for yes, what you've so done. God. We are yes, so grateful Jesus. for for the things you've done yes, and the Lord. things that you. But we are even anticipating yes, so you're going to do more. We're not going to be moved. The devil is not moving us. Yes, Lord. We're locked into this, God. Yes, Lord. We're locked into this gospel. In the name of yes. Jesus. Amen and amen. We'll see you next Thursday. Thursday.